Hi everybody, Frankie here from Vibrant Center for Voice and Movement. Today I'm going to be taking you through um, a predominantly uh, Bhutto uh, exercise and then I'm also going to talk about how that can be very useful for actors, especially those who are working um, on camera um, or over the course of a run if you're doing a live performance. Find your feet underneath you about hip distance apart and let your jaw go, let your tongue soften. And I want you to do a roll down, starting with dropping your head to your chest. Make sure your knees are soft. And then let the weight of your head take you all the way down. Take time with this. And take a breath here at the bottom. You're not trying to um, touch the floor necessarily, just finding release and weight. And nod yes. And shake your head no. And let your head wobble in a maybe. And then slowly start to stack your spine one vertebra at a time. And now let your arms be an extension of your spine. So as your head comes up, let your arms reach up to the ceiling. Take a breath here at the top. And then let your fingers go, let your wrists go, let your elbows go, and let your shoulders drop. Beautiful. And now find a little bend and release in the knees. And let your breath go as you do this. And I want you to visualize all the water in your body how you're stirring up all of this liquid inside of you. And find some sound on your exhales from time to time. Let your head go. Let your back release, let your glutes release. So you're moving water around your body. Imagine the ocean inside of you. See how the ocean is stirring up, crashing on the shorelines of your body. Let the head go. Let the brain soften in the skull. Let yourself be animal here. And then progressively, you're gonna let this get a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller until you can still feel the ocean moving through the inside of your body. But to an outside observer, your outer layer looks still. And here, let yourself land. Here's your standing corpse. Just like if you were lying in Savasana on the ground, how can you have your feet on the earth and letting all of your joints hang, letting your muscles soften, letting your tongue and jaw go here. And notice your breath.
just watch your breath as if you were watching somebody else breathing. Notice the sensations of an inhalation. How do you know you're inhaling? And what are the sensations of exhaling? exhaling? How do you know that there is an exhalation happening in your body as you release? And now as you follow your inhalation and your exhalation, find a pause after your exhalation. When is that desire for air popping up and where do you feel it? What happens in the space between exhaling completely and then inhaling again? And explore a little touch of sound on your exhalation. Just a fluffy, soft sound, starting with an H. So it might be a huh or a he, or a ha, or a ha ha. Keep finding those moments of pause before you inhale again. And now bring yourself to that little bounce. Let the jaw go again, let the tongue go. <sighs> Letting the water slosh around inside of you, feeling the ocean in your body. And you can play here, you could go something short and sharp and fast, or you could go big here. Letting the head go, letting the spine be soft, letting the glutes relax. <sighs> and we're going to let this go in three, two, and one. Just let that get a little smaller and a little smaller until you can still feel the ocean inside of your body. But to an outside observer, your outer layer looks still. And find an exhale on sound and shake it out. <sighs> Beautiful. So this is an exercise that I've wanted to lead for a while. And I was thinking about how I was going to do it um, through the phone, through a screen. And so for, for this is an experiment to see how this goes. So I have a water bottle with me and I have something very soft with me. If you can see, that's actually uh, what I put over my microphone when I'm using my Tascam, uh, when I'm pre-recording my lessons for clients who don't have access to Zoom or um, a camera. So it helps to prevent me from popping my peas, um, and, but it's also incredibly soft. So if you have something around, uh, if you have a water bottle and if you have something very soft, um, you can bring those objects so that you can actually have a sensory experience. But if you don't, we are going to use our imaginations. I'm, I've got one here and then um, just see how that works for you. 
So to start off, with, let's start with the soft item. And you might have something like um, a rabbit's foot or a soft sweater or um, um, a toy. And if you do, what I want you to do is, is feel that. And feel that with different parts of your body, especially the neck is very sensitive. You could try the underside of your arm. And breathe as you do this. So you're letting this um, experience in, the inside of an elbow. If you want to put it on your face, and this is up to you, but the backs of your eyelids. A makeup brush might even work well here. And now bring it up to your ear. What's the sound of this object? What's the texture? What's the sound? Does it have a temperature? And now what I want you to do is put this object down. Come back to your standing corpse. Let your jaw go. Let your tongue soften. And I want you to go through that journey in your memory. What is the sensation of that object? What's the sound of that object? And now, how does your body want to respond? It can be a part of your body that didn't come into contact with that object. Is there a, a pace here? How fast does your body want to move? If you imagine that object moving over different parts of your body, how does your body want to react? Keep breathing as you do this and even allow there to be an audible exhale. Huh. Huh. And if you find yourself at first moving slowly, maybe there's a moment for some speed. Huh. Huh. What would this be like if you felt this object between your fingers or between your toes, the backs of your knees? So we're focusing on sensation and moving that sensation around your body. What about sound? Does the sound give you a slightly different movement quality if you just move in relationship to the sound of that object? Keep breathing. What if the sound lived in your sternum? What, it lived, what if it lived in your tailbone? And then let this go in three, two, one, come back to standing corpse. Have an audible exhale. <sighs> so why are these valuable? Not just for Bhutto-based artists or dancers, but for actors, for actors who work especially in film or for actors who have um, a long run for a show that they might be performing live. What I really have found so effective is that uh, movement-based work can be incredibly useful where in the past people have relied on emotions 
because when you want to create a um, an emotionally authentic performance, but one that is also repeatable, often people end up extremely wrung out and exhausted. And often it's a little bit like keeping a cut open and then constantly poking that cut. Good, it still hurts, it still hurts, and then it's gonna get me to have an emotional response. Whereas um, that's not always sustainable. And sometimes um, what can happen is that we can get burned out, we can start to rely on um, some really negative coping mechanisms. And uh, when we're thinking about having longevity and repeatability and authenticity, but also maturity as performers, um, sometimes it doesn't require us to go for the cut, especially because we're not always playing the big emotion. So what you can actually do is work with the idea of sensation. For example, if I have a scene, I might subtly be thinking about an ant crawling on the back of my ear. And that might create a little bit of tension in my body that would um, symbolize this character, or would, would bring this character to life. It also might cause a little bit of an emotional reaction. And it gives me something really specific to work with as I can feel exactly where that ant is crawling on my ear. And it can affect my, the sound of my voice. It can inform how I um, emphasize or color certain words that I'm using. It can impact the pace at which I'm speaking, or whether there are times that I'm speaking a little bit faster and then I slow down. And it doesn't really matter whether uh, my fellow actors or the audience know what I'm working with, but what does matter is what the camera sees. And that it sees you working with specificity, something that is very real, but it isn't necessarily emotionally um, exhausting or wringing you out. It isn't asking you to relive trauma. It isn't asking you to imagine trauma. Because one of the things is that our bodies don't differentiate between an imagined trauma or a trauma that's living in our minds and a, and a trauma that we really are experiencing. What's also really neat is that with subtlety and layering, um, this can create really nuanced performances and characters. So what I suggest you do is play with this idea um, and try some self-taping and just seeing how subtle it could be. So maybe there's an ant that is crawling inside my armpit, but I don't really want the other people to know that I'm uncomfortable. So what does that do in my body if I can't just, right, do something about it? But I have to deliver my lines and I have to stay connected to the scene partner while I've also got this other thing happening and I'm trying to negotiate the two in a way that they're still very real. I have my scene partner, I need to react to my scene partner. I have the stakes of the conversation, the interaction we're having, but I've also got these other stakes happening as well. What this also helps to do, I talked about layering. So sometimes what can happen with actors is that they identify a main emotion and then they play that main emotion. And the thing is in reality, that we as complicated people will be feeling lots of different emotions, sometimes very conflicting emotions at one time. And so working with um, these Bhutto-based images and also um, some Bhutto-based training, which allows you to cultivate greater awareness and sensitivity, can actually contribute to your performances, even if you're really a die-hard realism-based actor.